I'm Sue Ann, and welcome back to the Catskills Kitchen at Cornell Cooperative Extension. Today I have here again with me, Chef Michael, who is the director of the Catskill Hospitality Institute at SUNY Sullivan. Hi, Chef Michael. Hello, Sue Ann. And today what we're going to be making is we're going to be making an easy black bean soup and a butternut squash puree. That's correct. So, um, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to make the two soups simultaneously. Um, we have two six and a half quart uh, pots here. Um, and so we're going to make, in one pot we'll make the black bean soup, and the other pot we'll make the uh, butternut squash soup. So we have an array of vegetables here from our local farm. So we have local potatoes, carrots, uh, lime, peppers, um, onions, so we're going to have all that, and these ingredients will go in both of the soups. So, uh, the butternut squash soup will be a pureed soup or a cream soup. So, when we hear the term cream soup, it doesn't necessarily mean it has cream in it, it's just the texture of it. So, we will cook that until all the vegetables are uh, well done. So, we don't want our vegetables to be al dente in the soup, we want them to be well done. And then from there, it'll go into uh, the blender, and then we'll spin it off. The black bean soup will go in the other pot here, um, which will have traditionally bigger, bolder flavors, garlic, onions, we'll put the lime juice in there, and uh, we are going to um, puree about half of that soup and put it back in and give it its proper thickness. So, to get started, so if you can put some of that beautiful oil okay. in there. So, what I want to tell you about this, these products, Chef, is it's from our... Um, shoptastenewyork.com store. Um, it's an online store and also we have a um, little shop down at the Woodbury Commons and this is um, all products made by New Yorkers for New York, in New York. So today we're using Hudson Valley cold pressed sunflower oil in our soup. Okay. Beautiful. Yes. So for our black bean soup, we're going to add the, some onions. Some celery. Garlic. Carrot. So all the vegetables we're putting in the soup are, we want it to be uniform, so we're putting in what's considered to be like a medium dice, because when we're finished, we actually want to see these in our soup. So kind of chunky. Chunky. Right? Whereas mm -hmm. with the puree soup, um, we could put, you know, all different shapes and sizes of whatever we're putting in there for flavoring because we're gonna puree it all up. So you're not gonna physically see this. But in the black bean, we want to see um, everything we're gonna put in there. So Great. nice medium dice. And then we will Stir it up. Awesome. Swin, this is your job. Okay. You can um, turn up the heat a little bit. Alright. Sure. So we have that one going. Smell it. So this is the beginning of soup season. Everybody loves soup. And uh, you know, a nice hearty soup can be considered a full meal when you eat a bowl of black bean soup. Uh, it'll usually suffice, you know, as a nice lunch or even a dinner during the winter months. And the beans count as protein, so and we have your protein, protein and your vegetables. It's perfect. Maybe um, have some rice on the side. That will look so good. Looks so here we great. go with some uh -huh. onions. Okay. So this is for our puree soup. This one here. So when we're making a puree soup. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of different ingredients into it. I believe that um, the puree soup should 
emphasize what the lead of, the, of you know the lead character is. So we want that soup to have the dignity of butternut squash. So I'm not going to add a lot of flavoring ingredients to that. So all of my sauce with onions. I don't put a lot of strong aromatics in there, and then we'll add the butternut squash. Same, you could use the same technique if you were making cream of broccoli, cream of cauliflower, cream of onion, cream of whatever. So basically, you're just starting with the two vegetables, mm -hmm. and you want to sweat this down until it's tender, of course. And our vegetables for the black bean soup are almost ready. So we're going to put a little red pepper in there now. So again, the vegetables that take the longest to cook are the ones that are going to go in first. What do you think, Suwan? How's it look? I think it looks beautiful. Can you put the seven on there? Yes. Yeah, I think it looks beautiful, and I can see how everything is starting to come together, and the um, onions are becoming transparent, just like what we want. So. Can you just put like a uh, teaspoon of salt in that one and that one? Salt. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So we add a little salt to our vegetables, not to as a flavoring ingredient, but it helps to bring out the moisture and uh, adds to the consistency of our vegetables. So we're doing that. Then here we have cooked black beans. So these could be uh, dried black beans that you had soaked and simmered for at least an hour, or you could use canned. So these happen to be canned, but the integrity of a legume or a bean that is canned is still a very, very high standard and I would highly recommend them. So I'm gonna add that to our soup. And what I did with the canned black beans is I rinsed them thoroughly so all that starch and everything came off of them um, until it ran clear. How's it looking, Sue Ann? Wow, looks beautiful. Mmm, it does. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks like fall. It does. Looks like four there. Mm -hmm. It really does. Did you talk about that beautiful sea salt? Yeah. You did? Yeah, I love it. This is great. Does it come from France? No. It comes from New York. It does? <laughs> well. Where, where, where in New York does that salt come from? Uh, let from? me take a look here. I've never seen the salt mines. I, well, I don't have my glasses on. I don't have mine either. Um. I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, here. Thank you. Oh, cool. Let's see. Well, okay. <laughs> Agganist, New York. I can't see. Oh, well, here's your classes. Look. Amagansett, New York. Amagansett. Oh, there you go. I'm assuming it would have to be somewhere on the ocean or close to the ocean. Atlantic, yes. Okay, so then let's get going on this one. We're going to give this a nice stir, okay. a little more stir up. And then, so both of these soups could be made vegetarian, um, meaning no, you know, chicken stock or oh. beef broth or whatnot. So in lieu of, you would just add water. Right. Uh, you just add cold water to it in lieu of chicken stock. Today we're going to make them with chicken um, stock. I have chicken and vegetable. Okay, so let's make, uh, let's make uh, the, this one with, Vegetable and okay. this one with the chicken. So we just need awesome. a, some chicken stock in there. Okay. Oh, there you go. This one, chicken. Okay. There we go. There you go. Beautiful. Okay. You need so about what? Keep 30? going. All, all, all the, the whole. Yes, indeed. This is 32 ounces of vegetable stock. So we're just going to bring that up to a simmer and we'll let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes and we should be fine. Okay. Go. Cool. There you go. So as far as salt and the aromatics, the seasoning, um, we wait, we're going to wait till the end to add that. So uh, because as the soup cooks, it's going to reduce. So we want to make sure we flavor the soup after it has reduced rather than while it was still a big volume. Otherwise, it could have too much of a seasoning or too much salt, too much pepper. So when you're going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to taste. You're going to have to try one of those onions and see if it's soft. <laughs> Okay. Do you eat onions? Yes, I do like onions. 
a must. It's a must also let it go because mm -hmm. the key to, to the key to this to a puree soup is making one hundred percent sure that those other, those onions are soft. Yeah. So we can boot this up a little bit more. Okay, now. let's boot it up. Okay. And then uh, the aromatics we're going to put in this when uh, it does when we finish it is going to be some dry oregano, mm -hmm. a little basil, cumin, and salt and pepper. And okay. this one, the butternut squash, will just have salt and pepper. That's it. Okay. So we're almost there. So whenever you're adding a potato to your soup, uh, that would be the, one of the last ingredients that you would add because due to cooking time, um, it's just going to melt away on you. So your other vegetables would go in uh, way before the potato. So this is something you add uh, at, towards the end. There we go. Okay, and we're adding that to the butternut squash? We're going to add that to that one. Oh, black bean. Black oh. bean, yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Could be done. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to add our beautiful butternut squash here. Okay. It smells good. Already. There we go. Great. Let's start here. Give that a good swirl. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. You can put it like another quarter teaspoon of salt on top of that. Please. My favorite soup yes. is, uh, I'm going to say, uh, I like bean soups, mm -hmm. soup, white bean soup, um, black bean soup. What about you? I like minestrone and I like cream of broccoli. Cream of broccoli? Yeah. It's my favorite. With cheese in it? Of course. Black bean cheese soup? Yeah. Of course. I love cheese. We sell, where I, where I work uh, at the college, we have a bakery. Um, open to the public, and um, we sell soup there, and we sell about 10 gallons of soup a day. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and in the container, and people love the soup, and um, we sell lots and lots of soup. It's wonderful. I mean, it, it is so hearty and perfect in the winter, anytime, really, anytime during the season, but winter is special. I like it in the winter. Like comfort food. Okay. So now you can put that, that vegetable stock in there. Soon. Okay. So the butternut squash is going to be 100% vegetarian and vegan. And gluten free. And gluten free. And the black bean will be uh, gluten free. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. Yeah. Gluten free. <laughs> gluten free. Gluten free. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, so you're going to bring your both of the soups up to, you know, a nice boil, and then you're going to lower them down to just a, a slight simmer once they get going. And you'll have to do that for, you know, at least 15 minutes till the vegetables get tender. This one is starting to simmer. Nicely. Yeah, starting to simmer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, we just want these, the vegetables to get tender. And we'll be on our way. It's so colorful. It is. It's perfect. And then when do we put the lime in at the end? We're going to finish it with the lime, yep. We'll, put the okay. lime. we'll finish with the lime. Mm -hmm. And we'll finish with some of that uh, special dehydrated garlic you have there. Tasty. From shoptastynewyork.com. You can go up. I'm just going to hit okay. the button. Sure. Yep. I just like it's on high. Mm -hmm. So when you're cooking your soup on top of the range, make sure you stir it. You don't have to stand there, can, you know, totally all the time mm -hmm. stirring, but yeah. because of the denseness of it, you do want to... Uh, you know, make sure you're stirring it from time to time. Absolutely. So you said in the beginning that we're going to 
puree some of some this, of it, yeah. but not, be, all of it. not all of it. Not all of it. We just want it to have that silky uh, consistency right. going on. And any blender will work if. Any blender will any, work. Anything, okay. So, um, what else do you like to cook, Chef? What's like one of your favorite meals? Meat. Meat. Braised meat. Mm. So braising is a slow, low uh, method of cooking moisture, uh, liquid, stock of traditionally pieces of meat that are extremely tough. So you cook them for out, you know, two or three, four hours, um, and they're just so decadent and beautiful tender. and tender and mm -hmm. wonderful. And, um, you know, everybody seems to like them, but not a lot of people can want to devote that time to, right. uh, you know, cooking it. Right. But I love making them, and if I go to a restaurant, that would be like one of my first choices. Usually they're always sold out, though. Of course. Good things sell out fast, right? I think um, one of my favorite meals to make is, um, I like to make lasagna. I like lasagna. I love lasagna. It was um, one of my father's favorite dishes. We always had it at Christmas. And um, it's not a meat lasagna. We would put the meat on the side. He didn't like the meat inside, on the side. So I like to do that, and we keep tradition since I was a little kid. My husband and I would make the lasagna and have it every Christmas. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, um, learning from when you were a kid, to sort of bringing it through um, your life. Yeah, I'm learning. Special recipes. So when we cook the soups, to know the next step, we would, even though they're not 100% cooked, we're going to pick out like in this black bean soup, I would pick out a carrot, mm -hmm. and when the carrot is cooked, then you know we'll assume that the soup is cooked. Almost. This chewing, you're gonna wait. You're gonna pick out a piece of that butternut squash and see when that's tender. Mm -hmm. You got a little ways to go, but yeah, I think so. I can feel that it's kind of hard still, just by trying to grab a piece. So let's put a few of your uh, aromatics, your herbs in okay. this. So we'll start with, what is that one? Oregano? Right. So how about like a teaspoon of oregano? Mm -hmm. okay. Just eyeball it. I'm just going to eyeball. Yeah, yeah, that's what I usually do. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. There you go. There we go. Okay. And then we have um, some cumin. Yeah. It's a little kick to it. Okay. Same amount. You can, you can kind of overdo it with cumin. You can. Yeah. You can. But you haven't yet. There you go. Okay. That's good. Okay. And we have some basil leaves. Some basil. Put in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. Good. And then we have some black pepper. Okay. Okay. We're looking good. Yeah. Okay. Just gotta take the top off. <laughs> All right. All right. Just pour some of this in there. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So when you think you could get the juice out of this lemon? I mean out of this lime? Sure. Hey, you do that. Roll it? Okay. I guess. You roll it? Show us, show us what you can do. Oh, I really... Margarita queen. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to cut it, right? Cut it in half. Yes. Okay. And we're going to squeeze. Oh, that's nice. We're going to squeeze right no, here. No, not yet. No, no, we're going to squeeze into like a bowl. Oh, into a little bowl. Okay. Yeah, we don't want the seeds, right? But are you going to, okay, you're going to do it with my hand? I thought you were going to have it. No, I don't have it, but we can, you know, if you don't have it, you can just kind of squeeze it. I do like it in certain beverages. Water, of course. <laughs> um, so we just squeeze lime. Squeeze, right squeeze, 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 squeeze. It was such a pretty lime. Yeah. It didn't have a lot of juice in it. No, it really doesn't. Maybe I'm just not strong enough. 
maybe somebody else who has strong hands can do it. There we go. How much do you think is out of here? Like a uh, I'm gonna say a couple that's tablespoons. Like I'm gonna say that's, so? that's like two tablespoons. Is that enough? Okay. There we go. How's that? It's perfect. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. How's that uh, squash? Is it tender yet? Let's see. I'll pull another one out of here. I'll try. So all of your soups are going to take a while to cook, but well worth it. Mm -hmm. For sure. I would give it like another minute. Another minute? Another minute, because some of the pieces are a little bit... Bigger than others. Bigger than others. Which happens, right? Yep. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm-hmm. One more minute. I just like to watch it bubble. <laughs> it's very good. It's very, very good. So we have two different types of uh, blenders here today. So this is called an immersion blender. Or a stick blender, so this is something that we would manually stick in and give it a little, and it will puree. And then we have this that you're all familiar with, a big uh, traditional style blender. So uh, this will do a, as you see, there's a lot of different ways. So this is going to do the job very, very quickly. Um, but this is easy to do when you have it on the pot. So we're going to pull the pot off. And I'm just going to puree this a little bit. So we're just doing this to give the soup a little body. We don't want to do all the beans and everything. We don't want it to be totally smooth. Okay, good, 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 good. It's perfect. Do you need any more spice? We might. Okay. I want your professional opinion. Oh, I love it just the way it is. You don't think it needs a little more flavor? Maybe. I don't know. I like I like things. You like it just the way it is? Okay. Yeah, How about a little salt? Okay. I'll do that. I'm not like two of them. Okay. Sea salt. And a little pepper. Okay. There we go. There we go. Looking All good. right. Great. Stir this one up while we're. So we'll let this simmer a little bit, put those veggies in there. Here. So when you puree, uh, when you put anything hot into the blender, yes, you are going to want to make sure it's this way. Oh, it's the other way. Okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. We got a release. Woohoo! You don't want to overload it because the the pressure will make it. I've better. actually had that happen to me. I think you know a long time ago, but I did have something like that happen, and you can get really burnt terribly. Okay. Yeah, so it's very dangerous. So we, you know, don't overload your blender. Absolutely. And always, I always hold the lid, just because yeah, <laughs> I don't that's want the a lid good idea. coming off. Look at that. 
I'm not going to put a lot of the juice in, so okay. just the, the chunky stuff mm -hmm. will not uh, cause it to. Okay. You know, I'm going to cause it to blow up like that. So this goes back on. Good. There. Okay. And then turn this on, and then we can hit puree. <laughs> So these soups are all going to be naturally thickened. There's no, uh, you know, thickening agents, cornstarch or flour or anything right. like that. It's all just being thickened by the vegetables. It's kind of like a vegetable milkshake of sorts, I guess. There <laughs> we go, so there. We want this to stay on until it's silky smooth, so we want to really get nice and puree. Side. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice and thick. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the color. Whoops. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll put this back on over there for a little okay. while. Okay. So after you puree, you just have it on for a couple of minutes. We'll just bring it up to a simmer with those mm -hmm. flavors, you know, will emulsify in there. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yep, here you go. And then we'll re season it again, that's it. We should be fine. Great. And how would you like garnish these? Uh, this one I'd put in a bowl, yep. and then I take like a teaspoon of heavy cream and I would just drizzle it on top. Okay. Some people would pour a lot of heavy cream right in there to make it really creamy, but I would just reduce like 95% of that just with a little bit on top. Okay. And then this, the black bean, I would traditionally finish with some fresh lime juice. Yep. And maybe a dollop of sour cream or something like okay. that. Maybe a little chopped cilantro, mm -hmm. which is customary with that. This is actually very, this is a Cuban soup. So it's actually the national food of Cuba. Really? Not in soup form, but they would cook the same, mm -hmm. same thing and leave the beans whole and serve it with rice. Nice. Very, very common. Very good. I think we're going to um, use some of our matzah. Um, that would be beautiful. Bread, um, you know, for like dipping on the side. I think so we can nice. taste them one more time. So okay. you need a couple spoons. Yep. I'm out of some spoonlets. Okay, <laughs> I'll I'll take care of that. I have spoons here. And then we will. So always, so always uh, check the seasoning at the end. Mm -hmm. Season to your own taste, right? Mm-hmm. That one's beautiful. This one, I think it it might need a little bit more something. Salt. Salt. Just throw with salt. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Okay. That should be good. Okay. A little, little pepper. Mm -hmm. Little pepper. And then we're going to finish that off with the garlic. No, we put the garlic in the home. Oh, yeah, we're going to finish The garlic. Um, yeah, oh, the, gonna... the dried garlic. Mm -hmm. We can finish that. We can do the, this soup with that. Because okay. it, need, it needs a little. This one. Yeah, we'll put it when we do the bowl. Okay, perfect. On top. On top. Mm -hmm. Feel that. Feel this. It's always good to Delicious. Test, test your food. I think you can use two more. Two more. Two more salt. Two more salt. 
So this is going to be the ultimate in taste of you know butternut squash. It's mm -hmm. not going to have, it's not going to taste like a pumpkin pie when you're eating right. it, like a full pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. like some of these uh, seasonal soups are. It's going to taste like butternut squash. Beautiful. And uh, I think we're ready to roll here, Susan. Okay, I'm going to get you a couple of bowls. Couple of bowls, and we're going to plate it up. And. So we have the butternut squash. squash soup. Beautiful. Nice color. It is beautiful, that's for sure. There we go. There we go. Oops. There we go. Like that. And we have for the black bean soup. Black bean soup. little bit of lime and we're going to put a little bit of yep. we're going to finish with the lime juice and we're going to put a little bit of garlic a little garlic dried garlic right here whoops like that. Like that. Garlic. and then we have our butternut squash butternut squash beautiful mm -hmm. right there okay everybody so beautiful black bean soup, uh, hearty meal right there, and then a beautiful uh, butternut squash soup, which technically only has the sweated onions and the butternut squash and then pureed with some seasoning. Yes, that's it. That's it. Very simple. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.